So I go to the farmer's market once a week for all of my groceries, including Jericho's food. So I get fresh meats and eggs that I share with Jericho. Then I get veggies and stuff for myself and some cat grass for Jericho as well. I bring this massive push cart with me uh, to hold everything rather than lugging it around, but I do have to lug this huge heavy cart up and down the stairs. It's funny, right before I go to the farmer's market, my refrigerator is completely empty and then boom, all of a sudden it's full. So I went to the farmer's market today and I got this ground beef and this in here is turkey and some chicken wangs and a Jericho, <laughs> some chicken wangs. So I split this up between me and my boyfriend, share all of this for one week and Jericho gets a little bit of it. So I'm putting this in the refrigerator to thaw. It's been in here about since about 10 a.m. And I'm going to portion Jericho's food tomorrow. And then in the freezer here, I have this is, what is this? Oh, I think this is tripe and some chicken liver. And this is hearts, chicken hearts. And some chicken gizzards. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator now. Typically, I portion Jericho's food in the evening after I feed his meals so that I can use the same containers for his food. So all of this is going to thaw in the refrigerator overnight. This stuff, the, the wings and the beef will be thawing for more than 24 hours. This stuff is small and that'll thaw for 24 hours. And Jericho also eats whole prey. So I have where I'd be. I have these little ducklings, but they're super small and the quail also. I like to thaw those a few hours before I portion his food. So I'll probably put those in the refrigerator to thaw tomorrow morning and then that night is when I will portion them. I found that it's easier to portion through whole prey, like cut it up while it's still slightly frozen then that way the guts and blood don't go all over the place. It's, it's much easier to cut them when they're still frozen. And the chicken wangs, I'm gonna cut tomorrow once they're thawed. And then I save some for me and my boyfriend and Jericho eats the rest. So I got my chicken wangs. They're not really thawed all the way, so I'm gonna wear these gloves, otherwise my fingers will turn numb. And I've got the Green scissors I'm going to use to cut the bone and then I like to use these craft scissors for the skin because the skin typically dulls these. And here comes Jericho, here comes Jericho. See, they're still pretty so pretty, pretty frozen solid. But I found that uh, cutting through bone is actually a little easier when they're still frozen. So what I'm gonna do is separate the wingette and then the flat from the drum here. And I save a few pieces for Jericho and then me and my boyfriend eat the rest. Good job, Jericho. See, there's still some ice on here. So I'm gonna take this and cut right here. See, that was really easy. Look at all that marrow and juicy goodness. Mm. So I have these two jars here. I'm gonna put Jericho's here and then the wingettes, the rest of the ones that I'm not gonna use in here. See, that's, that's pretty easy just going through the bone like that, but it's the skin that's difficult. So I'm gonna put one of these flats and I try to find a small, like this is pretty big, so maybe I'll try to find a smaller one for Jericho. And Jericho's poops yesterday were, one of them was pretty much all tan. So I think I'm going to decrease a little bit of the bone. Maybe I'll just give him, usually I give him two wings a week so if I do the wingettes, the two wingettes and the flat, maybe that'll be enough. So it'll be six pieces, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four pieces. Maybe I'll just give him one of these. Last week I gave him two of these, so I was giving him two of each last week. So maybe I'll just do the one drum this week, see how he does with that. I love using this mat because it keeps my area sanitary. So cleanup is really easy. Just pick everything up, throw it in the sink. Don't have to worry about stuff falling on the counter, 
just falls on the mat, then I can still use it. Okay, so this, this drum is pretty small, so I'm gonna use that one. So this is Jericho's wings for the week. So I have wingettes, flats, and one drum, and here's my wings, all nice and seasoned. Gonna make those tomorrow, let them sit overnight. Yum, yum. Then I also have green tripe and liver, and I like to add some beef spleen. This is dehydrated. Of course, fresh is best, but some spleen is better than no spleen, so I'm just doing what I can do for right now. So I crush it up and add a little bit of water and add that in the tripe and liver mix, and that way the water can just rehydrate it and let that sit for a few hours before I portion his food. I also put the quail in the refrigerator about seven hours ago. It's still a little hard, but that's all right because it'll be easier to cut. I found that it's if it's frozen, it's a little easier to cut and manage. And the duckling I also put in the refrigerator to thaw at the same time. So first I'm going to weigh Jericho and then feed Jericho. That way I can use this jar and then I'll portion his food. So before I do Jericho's food, I need to weigh him because I like to weigh him weekly before I, this one does ounces and pounds. I like to weigh him weekly, that way I can adjust his food if I need to. Tear that out. <laughs> Jericho wants inside. So he's about 9.7, okay. So I like to keep him around 9.5. 9.7 is all right, it seems like he's gaining a little weight, so maybe I'll decrease his food by a little bit. <laughs> he's so happy because he wants to eat. Jericho, that's a pet food topper that I just started using. It has turkey and salmon. Okay. So I just put down a gizzard. He's probably gonna go for it right away. Let me try to get some of this dental powder on first. And I'm gonna put down some of his ground food to soak, soak up this powder. So I like to sprinkle this dental powder on top so that when he chews, he gets some of it and I'll put it in the water because he'll drink that. I add a little bit of water just to soak up the myoglobin, which is the blood that releases in the moisture. So he already ate the other gizzard and then the ground beef and that's his other gizzard. Kill it. Give me a polydactyl thumbs up if this is helpful so far so more cat parents can get their cats onto whole prey. So this is my meal prep area. I have my silicone food mat. That keeps my counter sanitary, my gloves and cutlery. This is the same stuff that I use for my food. And then I have this bag for quail and feathers, food scale and plate. And then I have all of these containers and jars that I use for storage. So I like to get everything situated before I start bringing out the ingredients. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my gloves on, duh. These are nitrile gloves, powder free. I'll put some links to everything that I use in the description. So what I'm going to do is take a jar and put some of this ground beef and the ground turkey in the jar so that I can portion out for Jericho. And this is the ground beef that I eat and the ground turkey that I eat as well. I'm gonna be honest, Jericho's diet is not completely balanced right now. I'm kind of balancing it as I go adding new things to his diet. So I kind of just eyeball it. I know that's probably not good for me to say, but that's what I do. And this is ground turkey, dark turkey meat. I do dark turkey meat because that's a harder working muscle than breast. So that's going to have more taurine. And I put them in the same jar and just take from it as I need it. But I'm gonna return everything to the refrigerator while I do the rest of the food. So the next thing I need to do is cut up this quail. I just put this in the refrigerator about seven hours ago, so it's still pretty frozen, which is fine because then that makes it easier to cut. And I use a fresh new bag 
That way I could just work inside the bag, otherwise the feathers will fly all over the place. So first thing to do is detach the head. So I trim the feathers because otherwise sometimes Jericho's like, um, what is this? What do you expect me to do with this? And then I return it to the bag and I just continue to cut the rest. And I usually clip the wings next because this is mostly just feathers. See, it's like they just fly everywhere. They fly, that's what feathers are for. So I also like to trim some of these feathers too, just because it, it tends to be a lot of feathers and that kind of turns Jericho off sometimes. Next I do the legs, and these are pretty easy to snap off when it's still frozen, but then I'll still use this to kind of rip it apart. But you see there's a lot of feathers that still come off. And I try to cut up the quail into about seven pieces at least so that he's eating one piece a day. Sometimes I end up getting eight or nine. And I try to cut them up into chunks. Look at all those organs. See, so it's much easier to cut. It's a nice, nicer clean cut when it's still kind of frozen. If it wasn't frozen, this would be all over the place. It's just much easier to handle and much, it's not as messy. So I'm gonna trim some of these feathers. And it also helps if you twist. Some of the feathers even just come off when you're twisting because the skin pulls on it. See, that's such a nice clean cut versus if it was thawed, it would be all over the place. And this is the breast and the wings. So I try to cut this in half and then cut it down a little bit more if I need to, because this is often a very big piece. Actually, that's a pretty decent chunk. So I'm probably gonna keep, keep this chunk, just get rid of some of the feathers. And that's the, the coel neck, part of the neck. See, that's so tiny compared to a chicken neck. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the larger pieces I'll probably put on its own day and then one day I'll put two of the smaller pieces and then that way he'll have an even amount throughout the week. And I try to get all of the feathers out and very carefully fold this because you don't want the air to the feathers will go everywhere. So I just very carefully fold this, put it to the side. Okay, so let me get, put these in the sink. So earlier I put some of this beef spleen in here with the tripe and the liver and some water. So I'm just gonna give it a good mix. That way he gets an even amount of this. I split this up daily. So I'll just mix it up. That way he gets a little bit of everything with each day. This is a piece of liver right here. Basically turns to mush when you cut it up. Very tiny. So I have everything sealed. I'm gonna use it and then seal it. And typically what I like to do is put the containers that I'm going to use and keep them open. Switch this back to ounces from when I weighed Jericho. Tear it out. Okay, so tomorrow morning I want Jericho to eat this little duckling. So I'm gonna do that first. And then since he's eating the duckling, I'm just gonna go in with the meat, so this is the tripe, liver, and beef spleen mix. And then I have some gizzards here. I like to keep them into big chunks so that he can chew. And then I have chicken hearts here. And I'll give him a small wingette to chew on in the evening. So he'll have the duckling in the morning, and then he'll use the wingette in the evening. And instead of giving him the wing flat or the drum, since this is pretty big, I'll just do that because I don't want it to take up too much weight because I do also want to use some of this turkey meat and beef. And last week I kind of did about 3.4 ounces and he has been gaining a little bit. So let me go back down to 3.3. I think that's good. Some days it'll be over, some days not so much. And then what I do is just split it up evenly between these two jars. So I'm gonna put the duckling in this one since it's larger, and I'll give him some of this tripe mix, half and half, half in the morning, half in the evening. I'll give him a heart, hey Jericho. And in the evening, he'll have the gizzard, and then I'll give him a little bit of this meat. So about 1.6, that's, that's a good amount for half, and then I'll just put the rest in this jar. All right, so now let's work on the quail. So I'm gonna go back and try to do the head. Where's the head? So since the head is quite small, I'm gonna give two pieces of the quail. And then I like to do the meaty bone next, just to make sure that I'm getting something to crunch on every day. 
So I'll give him the wing flat. And then again, I wanna give him some of this tripe organ mix. So I'll just give a little bit here. That way he's getting a little bit of it every single day. And since we're ha we have some secreting organ here and maybe in here, but I still wanna give him some heart. Maybe I'll even give him two hearts. And so some days, like I'm already at 3.1 and I wanted to stay around 3.3. So some days, you know, he won't have as much of the ground food, but that's okay. Just try to make it even enough. And I'm going to put this flat in this larger plate so that it fits and then divide up, make the quail go that way. I'll do half of the organ mix, one heart. Look at those ventricles, that's so cool. And then some of the ground beef in the morning and the rest of the meat in there. So when you're choosing your supplies, like these containers, I really like these because they're glass and they're freezer friendly, but they're like between six and $7 each. So I bought one of these each month until I had six. I need to buy a seven, but I've been doing two of these instead of one of these per day. So I used to just fill this up with his entire meal for the day, and then I would just split it in half. But now I'm doing two separate jars because I like to, I started warming up his food a little bit and can't really warm it up when I have two servings in it. So I like to warm it up just one serving and then warm it up in the evening and just put it in a little warm water bath. That way it isn't straight cold out of the refrigerator. But when you're choosing your supplies, like these are, like I'm reusing glass jars, like use what you have and upgrade when you can. Don't feel like you have to buy a bunch of stuff just because, you know, you wanna be perfect right in the, whoa, that's way too much. Just because you wanna be perfect right in the beginning. See, I'm talking now, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> and fill the rest with turkey and a little more turkey. I'll do a little more because I said I was gonna do 3.3, so perfect. If it goes a little over, I'm not too worried about it. I like weighing him weekly before I do his food. That way I can adjust as, necess oops, as necessary because otherwise, you know, you're kind of portioning it out. I used to portion out once a month and then it was kind of too late, you know? It was like, I need to portion it out weekly. I need to weigh him weekly so that I can really keep track of it because I've found that the closer Jericho gets to 10 pounds, the more his urine habits change. And it makes sense because obesity or being overweight increases the risk of feline lower urinary tract disease. And that includes crystals. So I just wanna stay on top of it and make sure that Jericho doesn't form crystals and I just wanna make sure that I'm feeding him just right. Okay, so I'll do one of these. Oh, you see feathers went everywhere. And then one of these wing flats. Or actually maybe I can skip a day because I was only gonna give six of these. So let me do, let me do a larger piece with the smaller piece. That way it's more even. And we wanna do his tripe mix. So I just finished. I had to turn the camera off because I just, I couldn't concentrate on what I was doing. So this is all, all finished, everything's empty, and I have my garbage all nice, and I have, everything is easy to clean. I just pick this up, my counter is clean, and I'll show you in the refrigerator. I have tomorrow's meals, so a.m., p.m., and then I also have the next day's meals, a.m. and p.m. So I have two days worth of food in the refrigerator right now. And then in the freezer, I have three, four, five, six, and then these two together are seven. So two jars per day because Jericho eats twice a day. And I put the rest of them in the freezer. So tomorrow's meals are already in the refrigerator to thaw. The next day's meals are also in the refrigerator to thaw. I like to do that just so that it's a, it's a bit fresher, you know, because cats are finicky about freshness. So instead of putting it back in the freezer, I just let it sit. But typically in the morning, when I feed Jericho breakfast, that's when I'll take the next day's meals out of the freezer and put them in the refrigerator to thaw. That way they're thawed for at least 24 hours, but your refrigerator is different. So you'll have to adjust as necessary. That's another reason that I like to do two split dishes for AM and PM, that way there's less food in the one container and it'll thaw much easier. And you can check out the playlist on the screen to get your cat to raw. Thanks for watching.